Hello, and welcome to Extend Data's Food Service Delivery Operations webinar. Today's webinar is sponsored by Extend Data, Motorola, and Zebra Technologies. And for today's webinar agenda, we're going to review uh, food service industry trends. We'll talk a little bit about who is Extend Data. And then um, we'll hear about electronic proof of delivery, proof of delivery with mobile conductor a day in the life with Mobile Conductor, and we'll have a question and answer portion. Today's presenters are John Pomerlo, Principal of Industry Solutions Group at Motorola, Steve Sager, CEO and President of Extend Data, Adam Beagler, Business Analyst with Extend Data, and myself, Georgia Brown, Marketing Manager for Extend Data. So first I'll get to uh, who is Extend Data. Uh, Extend Data was founded back in 2002, and we're currently located in Centennial, Colorado, which is a um, metro area of Denver, Colorado. Extend Data has been a long uh, member for the International Food Distributors Association, and we've been recognized two years in a row by Food Logistics Magazine for their FL100 Top Technology Partners Providers. And in addition, Extend Data's team has a long experience with the food service industry in several areas of relevance for proof of delivery. This graphic that you're seeing, we like to use it to help explain the totality of what Extend Data does. So Extend Data improves productivity and profitability by tracking inventory, assets, people, and transactions at critical points in the supply chain. To sum it up, we like to use the analogy of the Extend Data house. We have walls, windows, a roof, door, and foundation. But today we like to, we're going to talk about uh, the windows. So Extend Data has the ability to provide visibility into and throughout the information that you need for your supply chain. We implement our own mobile conductor technology as well as other partner technologies to help provide the best solution for your supply chain. Now, the first person who we're going to hear from is John Pomerlo. He is with Motorola, and he's here to talk about food service industry trends. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to talk about, on our first slide, a little bit where Motorola's experience is um, in the next slide. We'll see, typically, who we, we do business with, uh, the gain experience, and the proof of delivery business. Um, as we take a look at, typically, um, we have the food business as well, uh, snacks, uh, carbonated beverages. Um, and so it gives us a pretty broad range that we, we gain experience from um, and working with Extend Data. Okay, very good. So the, in basically what we see from a performance standpoint, um, the biggest key issues in the POD market, um, customer service. How do we continually improve our customer service? That starts to impact lost customers, lost sales, opportunity costs. And at the same time, it's a, it has a two-edged sword. So it all starts to drive up our costs um, as far as fuel costs, our hours of service costs, um, and depending upon what we need to do, and we're going to talk about hours of service in a few seconds here, um, driving up and, mat and um, running against some of the new legislative issues that are hitting there. Um, the employee costs uh, as well, as far as what we're paying per hour, um, as well as another key issue. So the more we can keep track of that, and we're going to show you this afternoon, and how we do that, keeping track of your drivers, keeping track of your assets, keeping track of the product um, through the, the total solution here. So we, the industry as a, whole, as a whole, in the next slide, we're going to see basically is doing, is doing much better than it has been. Uh, logistics was, and transportation was hit pretty hard uh, 2008, 9, and 10. Started, and 11 wasn't so great either. So 12, 13, we're starting to see it come around. Business as a whole is returning to levels of 2012. Um, and you know, before we see that, the continuing ongoing issues we see um, are driver shortages, as far as getting good qualified drivers, um, the turnover issues, fuel costs. We continue to watch fuel costs, especially with what's going on in the news right now. Um, but we start to see basically now with those continuous drivers, those key performance metrics, driving things like electronic proof of delivery, uh, pick and uh, proof of delivery. Basically, uh, those are now table stakes in this business. Uh, signature capture, 2D, and document capture, we're going to see some examples of that. Again, table stakes in the business. I have to know when I dropped it off, who signed for it, um, was, do I have an extra accurate count on what I dropped off, because otherwise I'm losing revenue. I've got dollars flying out the window. 
The other big area we see driving behavior right now is the compliance with the regulatory changes. So the, how, the highway bill right now, um, MAP 21, basically has is, is just been changed. It originally was supposed to be approved in October this year, October 13. Just got moved to um, looks like mid next year before the, the regulation is going to get released. But basically what they're say, stating is that within two years, as soon as they release it, um, all folks that are doing hours of service on paper have to do it electronically, so it has to be queryable and available for tax reasons. So DOT is driving that. The other big regulation change we see in the business, hitting this business is the um, enforcement um, of hands-free and of not using um, a cell phone. Right now, there's a fine in place, and my memory serves me right, it's about $2,750 you get fined in a vehicle, truck, uh, using your cell phone. What's interesting is that two-way radio, for whatever reason, CBs uh, are exempt from that rule. So, you know, it's kind of a, a dubious rule, but we know it's driving behavior and it's driving the business. So as we start to drill down in the business in the next slide, we take a look at balancing that efficiencies of our, you know, our customer service and efficiency and how far do we go in this balance. And we're going to see examples here where we can do both with the Extend Data solution. Basically, we want to drive efficiency as far as what am I dropping off? Do I have the accuracy right? Do I have the count right? Am I relying on my barcode so I have accurate information? Um, and adjusting routes and territories that have needed based on real information instead of kind of some guesses that we usually do when we're setting up our routes. Um, and then balancing that with a good customer service. What are my special runs? Um, do I have a customer that has a high value product that they can get, for example, their, their high value steaks? They weren't delivered, so we get a line of special run on that. Okay, that's going to drive up our costs. So any kind of reworks we have to do, any kind of uh, damage and overages we have to do. So that all kind of summarizes in the next slide as far as I need to have visibility into my real-time delivery orders. Um, I have to be able to place new orders real-time. I want to have a, a really good visibility back at the distribution center where and what is going on at any given point in the day. It gives me the flexibility to start to see um, any adjustments I need to make, any customer specials I need to run for that day, I have the flexibility to do that. Other things I'm doing is I have much more accuracy because I'm scanning everything that's going off and everything that's coming on the truck. That starts to drive down my costs. It starts, starts to increase my vehicle utilization. So we have a, a much smarter look at it. So if we had to boil it down into our key solutions in the next slide, we take a look at you know, route planning and optimization. Boy, the gentlemen here are going to talk about uh, following me. Basically, we have to, as we set up our territories, we take a look at, okay, what we think is happening and what is really happening as we run the routes. We start to get a feel for it in a mobile solution three, six, nine months a year. You know, how does that stack up? And so we get some real-time data, real good metrics of that. Uh, key, obviously, POD, for pickup and delivery, is key to this business. Um, it's interesting because we're seeing some folks that were traditional DSD customers uh, direct store delivery customers moving over to a POD model, a delivery model, which uh, has some benefits to it. Uh, gets, it's a much more simpler model, but it does put a lot more reliance on the data and the accuracy of what you're getting. Um, the other key air metrics we see is driver vehicle performance. Um, the top right hand corner, we see uh, an hour sheet, an HOS hours of service sheet. Um, that's an electronic version that's kept on the device. Um, combine that with some navigation. You see in the bottom left-hand corner, you know, giving us turn-by-turn -turn directions, and we might even point out in the mapping uh, points of interest would be actually the stores we're doing, and not necessarily the local parks or airports. <laughs> so something that's relevant to our business. The last area we see is again we're talking about asset tracking. It's amazing the number of customers um, that are going from scanning, which we think is fairly mature in the business, but it's amazing the number of customers that aren't scanning, um, and what's ca causing or issues around manifesting. Um, the data, meaning um, when we get to the final billing stage, we don't have a, a decent clean bill, you know, which to bill from. Um, if we take a look at the next slide, we, we start to see what are the onboard computing. So these are the top two that we see in this business for POD. So if there is no onboard computing today um, and you want to move and you start to, and you're using paper logs today for hours of service, you can use the mobile computer with the Extend Data application. And you see the zebra printer off to the left. So the mobile computer becomes the, the um, basically the center and the hub of activity. So it's controlling all the wide area network communications, 
it's controlling the Bluetooth connection out to your Zebra printer. Um, and in this case, if you see off to the right slide, it's actually communicating with an onboard telematics device um, that is tracking GPS full time. It's all it's doing logs, hours of service, it's running, basically reporting back everything to the handheld. So that's one very typical model we see with the mobile computer driving all the activity. In the next slide, we're going to see kind of a flip of that. The in many cases, we see customers that have very large fleets, or they have you know these types of fleets, and they've already gone to onboard computing and have a dedicated computer with a dedicated wide area network in place, relationship with their with their carrier in place. But they want to keep that in, keep that in play. They want to run the mobile application, mobile computer, and then have that connected to the onboard computer. So in this model, you see you see the handhelds on the left hand side in a variety. You see your zebra printer still stays in place. In this case, what happens is the handheld computer control or communicates with the onboard computer. The onboard computer then manages the wide area network and the GPS data. So you're combining the best of both worlds. Really, I don't want to say it doesn't matter which way you go, um, but it you know, depends on where you are in the cycle of your business. So just know that the, the application and the mobile hardware is flexible and can run basically in either direction, which is important because not everybody takes the same path. We take a look at the next slide. We take a look at kind of what are the so what do we see kind of moving forward? So we see mobile printing we saw with the zebra printers. Um, you see your mobile um, application running on the top left hand side. Signature capture, um, telephone, and telephony. As you move, we see customers moving from batch data into real time data is becoming much more important. Um, as we see coverage for three and four G coverage for most of the, the domestic North America. What's happening is we're limiting phone calls uh, to basically just out to the customer or to the dock, uh, so they know when we're coming in. Uh, as we move to the bottom left-hand corner of the slide, we can see document capture is also coming on board. We're, we're testing now um, the Motorola some various sophisticated document capture applications um, that would be integrated into your 10 data application, in which you would allow to take your bill of lading picture. Um, and some of the problems you probably everybody knows on the phone better. When you have a bill of lading, usually it's 3:30 in the morning, and it's raining, and it's crinkly and wrinkled. Um, and so, what uh, we're able to do with the mobile computer is basically take a picture of that, then flatten it out and clean up the image. In this case, you can see there's a barcode right in the center. If that barcode is usable, meaning there's relevant data, that the uh, document capture software will automatically trigger the mobile the extend data application and say look up this information or acknowledge this shipment in and then timestamp it. So it's doing a couple of different things other than just taking a pretty picture. In the middle picture we see scanning inventory and returns. Um, so important. I can't tell you this from accuracy from billing. Um, and what that enables you to do as things are coming on and off the truck, overages, shortages, damages. It allows you to print in the um, working with your zebra printer at that point you then any changes that happen on the fly, which always happens in the deliveries, um, you can then have the you know exactly what's been scanned on, what's been scanned off. You can grab a signature, and then you can go ahead and print a clean copy, which is so important, or email a copy. You're going to see some examples moving forward after I'm done here. Email a copy up to the customer. Instead of having a marked up copy that may be wrinkled or you can't read, it's hard to fill, you may have disputes. And, um, and so it just gives you a, a lot cleaner, more efficient, um, and a more friendly environment to work from. The last area we see. Um, as far as kind of leading technologies, we see voice moving from inside the full walls or inside the warehouse out to mobile applications. In this case, you can see the gentleman, he's in the dairy business, he's actually counting milk. Um, and then what he's doing, he's taking the directions off of his mobile computer into his headset and then responding back, you know, what basically keep doing the counting from the refrigerator um, and set up our code pass. We find that faster and some customers find that much more enjoyable to work with. Uh, know that the platform is basically a utility and so it work with you know, basically your extend data application. So um, kind of to wrap it up here in the next slide, we see you know there's multiple tools depending upon what your environment is. Um, you know things that devices that look more closer to smartphones to you know fully recognized you know durable devices that will withstand you know, sinking in water for three to six hours. Uh, this is a pretty tough business. Uh, so you need you know a lot of different types of variety and solutions and devices and form factors and sizes. Um, and that you know, Motorola is here to stand behind, and then working with our partners such as Extend Data for mobile applications and leading, leading the charge and working, you know, walking basically side by side with them uh, as, a, as a great partner relationship. So 
Um, that's basically what we see from the industry side. So, uh, Georgia and Steve, I'll, I'll turn that back over to you. Okay, great. Thank you, John. You're welcome. So, next we're going to have uh, Steve Sager, CEO. Steve, are you on the line? I'm on the line. Can you hear me? Yes, great. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, John, thanks for uh, the handoff, and Georgia, thank you for inviting me to participate in the webinar. The information that I'm going to share with you comes from experiences over the last three years as we've traveled around the country meeting with broadliners, system houses, and uh, specialized food service uh, distributors. So first, uh, kind of a level setting on definitions around in our world what we define as a proof of delivery application because what we've, as we've gone around the country, Sometimes when you, you talk to various individuals, you'll get various definitions of what proof of delivery is. So in the automation world, uh, these four or five things are typically present whenever we're automating with our solution. First is the capturing and validation of delivery ticket detail as products are scanned on and off of a truck. It's, it's more than just saying, I know when my truck arrived at a site. I know when it left, and therefore I can prove that we made a delivery. We're actually scanning everything that's coming on and off that truck, which leads us into clean invoicing so that adjustments for OS and D, the overages, shortages, damages, and returns, can be made at the point of delivery, and then a driver can leave behind a perfectly clean invoice with their customer prior to leaving. On-time communications is always present in our solution, so as certain events occur, like OS and D, during a route, that information can immediately be passed back to the back office systems so that people can make quick decisions on it. A lot of things that we're seeing, a lot of times we're seeing some of our, well, we're seeing some of our customers starting to incorporate the ability to, uh, on a real-time basis, look at available inventory and actually create orders uh, at the customer's location that is immediately uh, transmitted to a warehouse, picked and put on the next uh, truck for uh, immediate uh, delivery. Indisputable evidence, always present in our solutions, the ability to capture pictures, even motion picture video, barcodes, uh, scanning barcodes for track and trace, and store all of that you know, electronic signature and other payment information all in a repository, in an online repository, so that it can be viewed by customers, it can be viewed by your management teams, so that when disputes arrive, the information, the indisputable information around delivery can readily be um, pulled from this repository. And then the last uh, bullet is convergence. I can't stress this enough as we've gone around the country, and as John had mentioned in one of his prior slides, depending on where you are in the business cycle with your fleet of trucks, you may have invested already in route optimization software. You may already have onboard computing uh, capability and the ability to manage your fleets and see what's happening on a real-time basis with those fleets. You may, <clears throat> you know, at some point be implementing e-logs for hours of service to be compliant with the uh, Highway Act. Or you may not have done any of this at all and you're looking to do it. The important thing to know that I wanted to convey is that we believe there should be one mobile device, one user interface in the cab of a truck to be able to enable all of these three or four different technologies and to really, really simplify it for your drivers so that they can be doing their job and not having to focus on just being stewards of information and, 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 and being computer users. So here are some of the, the big hitters that we've seen from a business justification perspective around electronic proof of delivery. Of course, for the environmentally conscious companies, we have the ability now to completely take your delivery operation paperless. And in the workflow that Adam is going to show after I speak, uh, you'll see just how that's done. Second is visibility. Um, to be, to be able, or the ability that you can ramp your new drivers in about 40% uh, less time. We all know how important these drivers are to the business. We know that there's a shortage. 
we know that retention is absolutely critical to be able to keep these drivers when you've got a good one. But occasionally, one will leave for any number of circumstances. And the ability to be able to ramp up a new driver quickly is very, very important so that you don't experience lost productivity or reductions in customer service. Invoicing disputes, we've seen up to 70% reductions from the companies that we've talked to or the companies that we've implemented electronic proof of delivery. What that means is because we have indisputable evidence of a delivery, there's no longer a question or, or a mystery as to why was there a shortage? Why did a customer claim that they did not get certain uh, product when we know that we did deliver that product? And if the customer is always right, if you go by that adage, companies like yours typically will give that customer the benefit of the doubt if they do not have information uh, that can you know, positively um, prove that, that a delivery had been made. So with that information, up to a 70% reduction in non-payable invoices due to in these invoicing disputes. Back office labor, now that everything's being captured electronically, it's being captured real time, it's error free. The drivers leaving with a clean invoice have being left behind. There is a significant reduction now in your back office labor of people who are dealing with either invoicing disputes or manually entering invoicing data adjustments to that invoicing. Um, those invoices uh, on and around, you know, on a daily basis. Um, so big, big payback area there. Uh, the next two uh, bullets, you know, I'm a CEO, so I have to run my company profitably. And I also have to be able to understand our cash positions. So I really appreciate, you know, how cash is king even in uh, in distribution companies, it's a big issue. Um, but but that's your working capital, and so the next two items really uh, address that. If we're no longer having invoicing disputes, and then theoretically our customers are paying us on a quicker basis, and we have the ability to invoice quicker and then receive payment quicker, it does reduce our day of sales outstanding. And in in some industries and in some applications, we've seen day sales outstanding reduced by as much as 40%. So that just means getting cash into the company quicker so that that cash can be utilized uh, as working capital uh, to advance the business. Route productivity is another area as well. We have a customer up in Northern California. They run about 200 trucks. And now with, the, with, with having to record information on driver vehicle inspections, with having to update logs on hours of service, with having to you know handwrite and make adjustments on invoicing, and doing all the things that they're now required to do by implementing a, an electronic proof of delivery solution, we heard directly from drivers at this customer that the, the time spent on having to collect all this information and package it up and send it off has been reduced to the point where they're getting now 10% gains in their route productivity. So if you have 200 uh, trucks that are running routes and you're getting 10% productivity, it's conceivable that you are now able to grow that revenue, grow that business by, by 10% without having to invest in additional capital. Again, uh, a cash preservation uh, type of item on the balance sheet. And then finally, inventory control. Um, the, the reduction in fraudulent variance, the reduction in inventory shrinkage, the accountability from the time product is loaded on a truck to uh, through all the deliveries, through end of day reconciliation and returning a product into a warehouse. We now have visibility into what's happening in that last mile of delivery and thus through that accountability we are seeing uh, reductions in whatever your current percentage is of inventory shrink, uh, reductions in that number by as much as 50%. So on to some of the, may maybe some of the softer items that aren't as hard and as tangible, but enhanced customer service, John pointed it out, in the business of food service, there is one for sure way to lose a customer, and that is not giving them the product when they need it, 
or continually making mistakes around invoicing. Two sure reasons to have one of your customers switch to a competitor. Obviously with the technology that we're talking about, that possibility is almost eliminated. Second is compl uh, compliance. We've seen with the Food Safety Modernization Act and the uh, need in the event of a recall, uh, the ability to know exactly where a uh, product has gone and be able to uh, articulate where that product has gone within a 24-hour period and start notifying your customers. There will be teeth put into this re regulation at some point, but why not be ready now and as a default of implementing electronic proof of delivery and scanning product on and off the truck, you will be ready uh, in this part of the food traceability equation. And then finally, as I had touched before, the convergence of, of route optimization. Simply making it easier to leverage these investments in technology for your fleet by not having to burden your drivers with having to remember three different applications or using two different devices in their cab of their truck and also just having one company uh, to call uh, to hold all these other technology providers accountable. Uh, that is uh, a big reason for moving in, into this technology space. So specifically, I got, I've got a customer example. Uh, we've recently um, been asked to implement proof of delivery for a, a company in the New York area. They distribute meat. They have about 50 trucks. Uh, they're in a highly densely populated area and they were completely paper-based. They had to put the business justification together as to why invest in the technology, and here's what they specifically saw. 45% reduction in unaccounted uh, inventory loss, an 80% reduction in credits associated with invoice disputes, of course the paper, the paperless piece, and a 40% reduction in the labor associated with, with all the, the, the data entry. The second item on this slide, the 80% reduction in credits, alone paid for the technology investment in electronic proof of delivery. So I think that is all that I had. We are so passionate about this and talking just about the business aspects of proof of delivery, I will put this out there. I would be happy to visit with any of the companies that are represented on the phone call, uh, the webinar today, uh, to come out and talk with you, and especially if uh, we have the opportunity to have your CFO in the room as we go through these business justifications, I think we'll be able to arm anyone in your company with the right information uh, to, to put together a very compelling um, business story uh, to invest in this area. So without further uh, delay, I think we are ready, Georgia, to transition this to uh, Adam Beegler. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending today. What I'm going to do, my name is Adam Beegler. I'm business analyst here with Extend Data. Um, I'm going to take you through a day in the life of the driver from the viewpoint of the mobile application. So this is the main screen of the mobile conductor handheld application. Really what our goal is is to electronically help the driver manage his daily work um, while keeping accountable to the inventory and the inspections and everything else that needs to be done through his day um, as easily as possible. On this screen you can see that we've got a Today Stops button. This is going to list all of the deliveries that we have for that day. We have a Start of Day button which is going to uh, give us the process and workflow that we need to do for uh, making sure that we have all of the inventory on the truck that we need as well as any other pieces of the puzzle. We have a messaging button, and what this does is it allows users of the mobile con conductor system to communicate back and forth with each other. Um, think of it very similar to an internal uh, email or chat application. So drivers to back office can send messages to each other and vice versa. And then the synchronize button allows the driver to synchronize the application as needed uh, if any new information needs to be sent to the server or sent to the handheld from the server. This is a last resort kind of button. All of our synchronization takes place automatically behind the scene. So we're going to start with the start of day process. Um, ultimately, no deliveries can be made until the start of day process is complete. 
The first part of the start of the day is making sure that the driver identifies which vehicle they're taking, records the mileage of that vehicle, and then goes through any pre-trip inspection or DVIR that is assigned to that vehicle. These questions can be yes or no questions, they can be drop-down lists, they can be um, text boxes that the driver has to fill out. And on each of these questions, the driver has the capability to add notes or to take pictures associated with the question. This protects the driver from anything that happens uh, if they take the vehicle out, come back, and there's damage on the vehicle. You can look and see if uh, they had recorded that prior to their leaving for the day. And it just makes sure that they are staying compliant with any DOT regulations around uh, inspections. This is optimized for the start of day process, so this makes sure that this gets done before anything else happens uh, on the handheld. Next, the driver would go through and validate their start of day inventory. This can be done in multiple uh, different ways, depending on your business's process. Uh, very common in the food service industry is the inventory is predefined for the driver, so it will show up already on their handheld. They will just do a spot check, make sure that they have the pro proper product on their trailer to deliver to the customers that they have on their route for that day. Uh, if there's any scenarios where they keep items on their truck at a par level that they may add on to an order at one of their stops, they have the ability to adjust those items here as well. This ensures that the inventory is controlled and we're reducing shrinkage and fraudulent claims because the system is managing uh, the tracking of all of the inventory. Once we're done with the inventory, we're going to move forward to today's stops, which is all of the deliveries that have to be made for today. So the first thing the driver would do is select their first stop, and these can show up on the handheld uh, in a multiple multitude of different ways. Uh, they can be sequenced from a route optimization solution, they can be ordered by expected arrival time, or they can just display based on customer name. Um, and the driver can determine which order to deliver to. So there's a multiple, multitude of ways we can do that. Once the driver selects which delivery they're going to make, they would uh, enter into the customer detail record. Within this record, you can see that there's the address for the customer. Um, we can show any outstanding balances or any AR data that is present for that customer. We can display history for past deliveries that have been made for this customer, as well as balances that are uh, associated with each of those specific invoices. Um, this allows the driver to answer questions for the customer on past deliveries right there on site, as well as uh, just giving the driver as much information as possible without having to make any calls into customer service. Within the delivery ticket, you're going to see that all of the items that are listed for delivery will display for the driver, as, as well as the quantities for that delivery. There are multiple ways that the driver can confirm the items that he's delivering. Uh, the preferred method is either scanning the items off of the truck so that you have an electronic record of what's being delivered to the customer, or the driver can manually count and enter the quantity being delivered to the customer. At this point in time, the driver also has the ability to add or adjust any items to the ticket. So for example, if they are uh, dropping 10 boxes, but they can only find nine on the truck, they would have the capability to adjust that quantity down to nine. And all of the ticket totals, all of the uh, taxes, everything would be adjusted and reflect on that as well. This uh, also has the capability to record lot numbers and keep track of that. So that in the case of a product recall, you can tell exactly which customers got which lot numbers including date and time uh, down to the delivery. Once the driver's confirmed all of the quantities that they're going to be leaving for the delivery, we're taken to the ticket completion screen. This gives the driver another opportunity to see the items and the quantities. They're not doing any extra validation here other than just looking at the screen. Uh, it also gives the driver the opportunity to take a note associated with the ticket and to take a picture associated with the ticket as well. Uh, this is useful if there's any damaged product, if there's any um, dead drops where you're delivering product in the middle of the night that's not being signed for. Um, you can have a picture recorded with the ticket to validate that it was left where it was left and the condition that it was left in. Next, the uh, customer would sign for the delivery, um, giving you the recording 
of the signature on the ticket. The driver also has the capability to take payment for any customers that are COD, cash, check, or credit card. Uh, we just talked about this a little bit. The payment options that are supported in Mobile Conductor are on account, check, cash, or credit card. Um, with this payment, the driver is recording exactly what they're taking, and that's being recorded in the Mobile Conductor system. This allows us to print a clean and accurate receipt and print it out right there at the time of delivery. And it improves the cash flow as that delivery data is uploaded uh, upon the time of completion of the ticket. After all of the deliveries have been completed for that day, the driver is going to go through an end of day process. The end of day process is similar to the start of day in that they have to, they could possibly do a post trip DVIR or inspection. Um, they're going to account for any return product that they took back. They're going to validate any product that was left on the truck and is being returned to the warehouse. Um, they're also going to go through a payment settlement process. And this is where they're going to validate all of the cash or checks that they took during the course of the day that they're turning into the back office staff. Uh, what all of this does is once those tickets are completed, the end of day process is completed, um, throughout the day all of this information is synchronizing with our server, which is uh, integrated with whatever back office system you use to reduce the amount of back office administration that has to be done for, process, uh, or for processing delivered orders or for processing payments. As the driver is going through the system, there's also the capability to email a copy of the uh, delivery receipt to the end customer immediately. So as soon as that delivery is completed, an email will be sent to the end customer with all of the information, the quantities delivered, any payment that was accepted, and the signature of the person who received the delivery. Um, on the mobile conductor portal, the server side, all of this information is available as soon as it's uh, completed on the handheld. So you'll be able to see deliveries as they're completed. You'll be able to see the delivery information, including the date and time stamps. Um, if you have a device that's capable of it, we will also record GPS coordinates and stamp that to the ticket so that you can look at where the driver was when he completed that ticket. Um, you can also see performance statistics and trending. So how long, on average, does it take a driver to complete a stop? Um, how long does it take them to run their route for the day? Um, and then we have a lot of reports that um, are pre-built, like variance reports in terms of cash accepted versus turned in, any inventory variance reports, uh, DVIR reports. And we also have a report writer tool that will allow you to build uh, your own reports with information that you want to see and is critical for your business. Thank you, Adam. We appreciate it. So we are um, about five minutes till the end of the webinar, so we want to make sure that we're respectful of everybody's time on the phone today. What I'm going to do is um, open up all lines so everyone will be unmuted. Um, if you do not wish to ask questions, please remain muted so we can reduce background noise. And just one moment. Alrighty. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to speak up. Nobody on the line? Okay, I got a, a message through uh, chat feature a little while ago. Uh, this one is specifically for uh, John. The question is, when do I have to move from paper driver logs to electronic logs? Um, I, the current legislation says they're, they're due to vote on it next, the thinking next May of 2014 will be voted on. We think it will be enacted then. And then as soon as it gets enacted, you have two years to be in full compliance. So um, that should hopefully answer his question. OK. Um, and then I had another question. Uh, this one is for Steve. It says, uh, what about our drivers? What kind of training and support will they get? Good question. <clears throat> First of all, in terms of the implementation process, we'll be getting feedback from them so they'll feel like that they have some skin in the game and that they're being heard uh, relative to their concerns. And then we, uh, we, we're very big pro proponents of uh, kind of, a, of, of a, a walk before we run. So we will typically deploy the technology in, in a handful of drivers, uh, first making sure that they're properly trained 
and then uh, getting feedback uh, from them as they're, they're running their routes. The other thing that we're doing for them is that through the use of mobile device management software, uh, we're able to actually, from a central location, see everything that they're doing on their handheld. So if they do get stuck, um, we are able to take over uh, that uh, handheld to the point where they can actually see us moving through their screens and, and helping them complete through any problem area. So uh, it's something that, you know, you've got to be able to get feedback from them up front, um, show them, you know, that they can have success in using the technology and then support the heck out of them so that they become the champions and, and the raving fans for the rest of the uh, fleet. Okay. Great, thank you. Hi, this is uh, hi, this is Gary calling from uh, from Savile Food Service. I had a, just a couple questions. Um, the 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 handheld units. Um, I mean, are there cases where they just completely fail out in the field, and then if they do fail, then is the driver stuck um, and not able to make his delivery since he has no paper, or do you? suggest that the send some paper in addition to the handheld and and what experience you have with other companies and what do they do with paper versus non paper? Uh, that's an excellent question. So a lot of times it's a kind of like what Steve was saying, it's a migration process because there's a certain security blanket that you have by having the paper, of course, because that's the way we've been doing it. Um, what we see for my um, large distributors is a lot of times they'll still have like a full day's manifest printed out, like on a tractor feed kind of print out. Um, that basically will give the, the routes of the day. So if I got to say, here are my 27 stops I'm making today, kind of route and sequence. It won't necessarily give the detailed data that the driver will need. Hey, you know, you know, I need you know four cartons of meat. Uh, I got three ice creams. I got you know 14 milks to take off. Okay, it won't give them that level of detail. It'll give them the sequencing. Um, and then the handheld will contain the rest of the data. That's really a migration process. Um, in the beginning, you may want to have both of them uh, until you have the confidence. But you know, if you take a look at everyone, um, you know, in whatever kind of delivery business, you know, every FedEx truck, every UPS truck, um, those guys are all relying on their handheld and reliability around that. You know, you got to have a strong support mechanism for your hardware. So if something does go down, we can you know ship something overnight to you and have you know back in the depot. And so when that driver comes back in at the end of the day, we have you know a unit already on its way to the place for the next morning. It's already imaged and loaded and charged. So um, see, that's typically what we see you know moving forward. But in the beginning, definitely, it's, not, it's very common to kind of have both, so everybody kind of gets figure okay, everybody's comfortable with it. So hopefully that answers your question. And this this is Adam from our experience with all of our customers. Complete device failure in the field is extremely extremely rare. Um, most of the time the driver is able to recover from whatever error occurred and continue through their day and they may be in a situation where they get a spare unit the next day to alleviate any errors that were happening but the, the occasion where they have complete and total failure um, I don't know that I've ever seen it in six years of, of being with Extend Data. Um, generally if it's a recoverable error yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's usually, you know, worst case, it's a reboot. Um, you look at some of the largest fleets, you know, like North America, you know, the, the straight routing business, like FedEx manages, we manage 75,000 devices for them. UPS is over 130,000. Then you get them, you know, the Pepsi's and the Cokes, so the, you know, the carbonated beverage world, they're, you know, 20,000 units. Then down to the bakeries, of say, four or 5,000 units, and smaller ones, you know, um, it's pretty, that's why we build them the way we do. <laughs> Because it's a pretty tough environment out there, and your your cell phone usually doesn't last as long as these guys need to last. Um, a question about just um, how do you price um, the the point of delivery part of this? In that, um, I mean, certainly you sell to companies that have thousand trucks, and others have twenty five trucks. So. Um, I don't need to know your exact pricing, but how, how do you build your pricing model to, you know, for this, you know, for some a distributor who's going to take it? Hi, right, this is this is Steve. I probably could take that on. 
Um, our, our pricing model uh, on the software, uh, we go two ways. Um, we can go perpetual license, so you, you pay an upfront license cost, and, it, and there's two components in that regard. There's a server cost, and then there's a per handheld uh, cost for the client license. Or I think what's, what, what we're seeing uh, emerging the quickest, the fastest, um, is, is a, a cloud uh, computing model where we're hosting the software on our servers in the cloud, and then it, uh, the software is being used on a subscription basis, uh, software as a service. So in that scenario, there would just be one uh, fee per driver per month, and that would cover everything from running the software to using it to supporting it um, and, and then to um, getting your updates and all that kind of thing. On the hardware side, uh, there's there's the costs of the handheld, and um, and, and you're right. I mean, typically uh, the, the gigantic customers get a, get better pricing than the smaller guys. But we'll we um, you know multiple ways to look at that with you, and it's kind of uh, would love love to sit across the table and, and kind of just lay out the options. And um, uh, information to the drivers on the handheld that we were, we were going through the screens. Um, is there a place for delivery notes um, to send to the driver, like go in the back door, up three flights of stairs, down this hallway? So is there a place for that kind of information to come across to the driver? Absolutely. We have notes that can be sent to the driver at the customer level, and those would be notes that would be perpetual across any time a driver goes to deliver it to that customer. And there's also ticket notes, which would be notes that are specific just for that one delivery for that one day. Um, we support both kinds, and uh, we can take that either entered into the mobile conductor system directly, or if they're already present in your back office system, we can uh, take them from there as well. Um, so if, so if um, you host this on a cloud and um, and we, we pay per driver. Um, there's obviously a certain amount of implementation implementation cost in um, in interfacing with our current systems. Um, so how how is that uh, done and charged? What the it's a, it's about what do you guys? Well, do like I mean, to? obviously, just I mean, sending sending. I, I'm assuming there's some interfaces need to be done as far as sending data. Um, to the to to you guys as far as you know all the customers and you know all the invoicing and you know all, all the information that's going to be interfaced going to the handheld and then there's also the interface coming back which is you know all the payment data and and the the actual delivery data and stuff like that so um, yeah. how how is is that charged separately as a implementation kind of charge other than you know, different than the um, the cost per unit per driver if you're hosting it. Yeah, yes, that that's correct, Gary. There is a project um, fee associated with getting the integration done, getting everything set up correctly, configuring the software so that it's representative of your specific workflow on how you guys operate. So yeah, it's a there's a there's a project services related that happen, uh, then the deployment and then the use of the software. Okay. Great. Does anybody else have any questions? I like Gary's questions. <laughs> <laughs> I always have Great. lots of questions. I agree. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, uh, what I wanted to do is just go ahead and thank everybody for joining us today. We appreciate your time and we know that it's valuable. Before we let you go, we wanted to let you know that we will be at the uh, International Food Distributors Association Distribution Solution Conference here in October. If you're going to be attending, we'll be in booth 1114. And in addition, if you're interested, we're available on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And we often provide valuable information about how proof of delivery can assist your organization. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us at the information listed here. 
And in addition, we'll be sending out a copy of the recording for, of this webinar to you to be able to pass on to any coworkers that you feel, feel would value the information. So in conclusion, thank you very much for your time, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your week.